the Samaritan himself was not the culpable party. This is, in fact, an ethic, a central ethic of the gospel, right? This is what we find in the Belgic Confession, right? This old confession uh, from centuries ago that describes the nature of the atonement in this language, saying of Christ, he paid back what he had not stolen. This is the gospel. And so we're simply called to enter into this as people of love and not to sort of pedantically uh, try to uh, uh, f figure out ways to, to identify only those who were uh, uh, are descendants of slaveholders. And, and if not, then, hey, you're off the hook and be on your way or those who participated in uh, the different movements of segregation. But it, hey, if your family wasn't even, then you're not. Hey, look, we're in this together and we're in this not just as a culpable people, but a people called to love. Well, and then let's just push that out just a little bit further because you guys say it in your book and I love it. Reparations bears witness, not simply to our neighbors, but to the very love of God in the world. In other words, by this, we can actually witness. Totally. Right? Totally. By yes. this, by this, we get to reveal God in the world. And maybe we could think about doing evangelism this way, which is bearing Although, witness, right? That's right. And the world is watching. Yeah. The most important and most fundamental example of restitution is, is Christ himself. Anybody that believes in substitutionary atonement believes in restitution. Right. They, they already do. Anybody that believes as we sing and how deep the father's love for us that, you know, that, that Christ took our sin and paid, paid this, this, uh, and suffered the consequences of sin for us already believes in the basic logic of restitution. And so I don't really think that we need to like, I mean, I, I agree with, obviously I agree with Luke about, I mean, Duke about the, about the um, Zacchaeus and the Hebrew scriptures and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, and I, and we, and we wrote on that, but I think that there's a, there's something that very confusing to me about Christians who on Sunday could say, you know, thank God that he who knew no sin became sin for us and, and we might become, you know, righteous with God. And then on Monday say, I didn't do that. So I don't owe reparations. That is a sign of incoherence. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, and just to very quickly tease that out a little bit, where, where uh, theologians talk about satisfaction theory that's uh, grounded in the work of Anselm. Satisfaction is a broader moral category within which restitution actually uh, resides, exists, right? And that is built on things like in the Old Testament, that language of re uh, reparation or return is the same word, the Hebrew word asam, that's found in the suffering servant songs for what Christ did in regards to our debt to the Father. So this is what Greg is talking about, right? All the language of pain for our sins is reparation language that's actually found in scripture. So we actually talk about reparations and sing about reparations and preach about reparations every Sunday and you never knew it, you people of reparations. There you go. <laughs>